and welcome to an Inkdependence.com video review, this time Mont Blanc's Blue Hour. This is uh, the newest, sorry, second newest, now behind, um, oh shoot, what just came out? I forget, it's kind of a light blue, I'll pick one up uh, soon I guess, even though it looks a little bit light for me. Uh, but this is Blue Hour, this is the second most recent of these uh, limited editions, you should be able to get your hands on it I hope in the near future. Uh, but if you can, do. It's, uh, they go for 18 bucks. these little bottles. Uh, these are uh, what, 30 mil bottles, I think. Oh, best before June 2020. That's nice. How big is this bottle? Yeah, 30 mils. I got this one from Anderson Pens, uh, my preferred place for ink and pen stuff. Um, I snapped this up in that first round. I don't know if they have any left, but you might go and check. Uh, this can be a little bit tough to get a hold of when it first comes out. And one reason for that is that this is a really good ink. This is very fun. Uh, I definitely suggest you to get it if you can. Uh, this is the bottle. It's their typical bottle with their little plastic hat. Uh, this is our typical uh, limited edition bottle, I should say. You can see a little bit of light through the corner there, but I've only filled up these three pens. Maybe I've put it in the Andorra a couple of times, but um, this is a cool bottle. I like it, but uh, I want you to see here. Let's see what's in the bottle. What's in the bottle is this stuff. All right, hmm, the tripod's in the way. Well, it'll be a little off-center, but that'll be okay. Uh, this is the blue hour right here, and darn it, I forgot to write in shading and sheen again. Well, we'll get to that in a sec. Uh, as you can see, there is a bit of sheen here. Uh, what I did this time, though, is I just squeezed out a couple of drops from this Esther book that I had uh, the ink in, and uh, man, I got a lot of ink on the page, but that's kind of okay, because you get this nice coppery sheen around the edge. Uh, I didn't see this, full disclosure, in any of my writing samples. Let me see, uh, well, okay, I see a little bit of it up here, actually. It, just as I put it in the light, I could kind of see a bit of a glint. Uh, but you got to have a really heavy ink, or a really heavy nib to do that. So, uh, probably not going to see it all that often. All right, here's the thing about this ink. It looks very different in different pens. Uh, this is on my traditional Rhodia that I usually do my reviews on. Uh, it seems to be just fine in wet or dry pens because I used it in this Andoro which has got the smoked oak barrel, beautiful, beautiful pen, uh, and this little Esterbrook, which is kind of a little bit dry. It's got a uh, 2314 medium nib, which is one of these relief nibs. It's a bit of a stub. Um, I really like this nib, but it does run a, a bit dry. Uh, nonetheless, this ink doesn't have any problem with that. So, um, you know, good in wet and dry pens. All right, now no bleeding, feathering, or spreading. We'll see that in just a few minutes here. Uh, shading and sheen, let's see, yes, and yes, alright, so there we go, I don't know why I keep putting that in, actually I do know why I keep forgetting to put that in, that's because I put it in last, uh, after I do my ink splotch, because I want to make sure that it actually shows shading or sheen uh, before I write it in there, alright, uh, the other pen I had it in was one of these, this is a Schaefer Javelin, if you haven't seen one of these before, go and like grab one at a pen show or something if you can find one. They're very good pens and they usually cost like 15 bucks. Uh, they're not very expensive. When they came out, they were far more expensive, but the cost has really come down on these guys. And they're very good. It's got a nice rubberized grip. It's a snap cap, but it's very, very strong. Uh, it's got a nice clip on it. Kind of a, you know, springy clip. All right. Anyway, um, but it's got a very good flow. You'll see in the Andoro, let me zoom in a bit. Ooh. Maybe too much. You'll see in the Andoro that the flow there it makes it look like a very, uh, very dark blue. But when you move down to the Schaefer and the Esterbrook, you definitely see more of a light blue sort of color there. Um, and so I was actually a little worried that maybe I didn't remember what ink I had in the Andoro. Uh, and so I did two um, chromatographies. They came out the same though, so it's the same ink. Anyway. Um, so here we go. This is uh, the commentary. You'll see better pictures of this on the blog and that sort of thing. Um, I think this one actually does change a bit when you put it down on the page. It does start out blue and then kind of darken to a blue green fairly quickly. So this is kind of a bluish greenish ink. Um, I like it quite a bit. Here it is compared to a bunch of other blues. If I ever have anything linked up, it's uh, I've got blues. Uh, you can see the Mont Blanc blue hour there at the top. Uh, Private Reserve's American blue, which is one of my standbys in my Faco Sport. Uh, Namiki Blue, which I like a lot. Uh, Ackerman's number four, which is kind of purplish. I don't know if that's really coming up here. Uh, it's overcast outside, so I'm not getting very good natural light in here, but yeah, that's the way it goes sometimes. Uh, Lamy Blue, which is a straight up blue blue. And then one that I thought there was going to be closer, which is Yamadori, 
um, which is a lot darker than Blue Hour. So, uh, well, let's see. Go ahead and do a little scribble of Blue Hour. Mix to it with the Andoro. A little arrow, so we know what we're talking about here. Um, I don't know, I guess if you use the Andoro, it's pretty close. So if you put down enough ink, then Blue Hour does look a lot like Yamadori. So if you like Yamadori but can't get a hold of it, get some Blue Hour. I don't know, that's a weird way to go because Yamadori's not limited. But that's the thing you could do, I guess. They're fairly close. All right, so let's go ahead and do the water drop test here. And blam. All right. No particular water resistance here that I'm expecting. Uh, it might be a little bit. I guess I'm swirling away here, but it doesn't look like it's going all the way off the page. So let's mop it up and see what we've got left. And there we go. Yeah, not too bad. Could be worse. There's a lot of stuff that came up here, uh, but there's also quite a bit left on the page. I wrote this uh, little water test bit with the Andorra, so it put down a lot of ink for me. Um, it's pretty smudged up, but I imagine that if this was, I mean, you can still read water test up here if you had to, uh, but, uh, I don't know, not really water resistant. A little bit, not a ton of that stuff. All right, let's take a look at the chromatography right quick. Here they are. I told you I did two, uh, because I wanted to make sure I had the right ink here. Uh, yeah, I'd hate to have messed that up. Yeah, these are the same. The one up here is the Andorra. You can see a lot more ink that got put down, and so it's got a, a much broader band, a much darker band in the middle there. But yeah, same blues and greens and stuff at the top. So yep, same ink, just you put down a lot more with that Andorra. The Faber-Castell nibs are very smooth and excellent nibs, but they do tend to run a bit wet. Um, so be aware of that if you're looking at Faber-Castell. Um, that doesn't mean don't get one. It just means that it's you know, still uh, going to be a little bit wet. All right. Um, and then let's see the uh, copy, paper, copy paper test right quick. I should have had this ready before I did the review, but too late to go back now. So there we go. All right. So the top bit is from the Andoro. You can see that's very wet, but you can also see there's not any feathering or spreading going on there. Uh, likewise, the other two below, uh, the medium in, uh, in the Esterbrook and the medium in the Shaper Javelin. You can see that the Javelins is a bit more green, and the um, Esterbrook's a bit more blue, and that's just because of different uh, amounts of ink being put down. So, on the back, nothing. This is, don't ignore this one up here. This is dark chocolate. This is just a thing that was there before. But here's the, the heavy duty Andoro nib. Uh, a lot of flow there, but I mean, you see a couple of spots coming through, but for a wet pen like this, this is excellent behavior for this ink. And look down here where I was using those other two pens. Really nothing at all. You could totally use the back side of this page if you wanted to. Uh, more show through than anything, excuse me, anything else. There's a couple of maybe little dots around here where I dotted the I on um, is, but you know, nothing bad. So on copy paper, good stuff. On Rhodia, good stuff. This ink, I'll go ahead and say that I like it a lot. It's probably worth the cost, especially since it's limited edition. Uh, I'm a little bit of a completionist, I guess, in limited editions, uh, so I kind of had to have it. Uh, but yeah, 30 mils of ink is, it's a little bit expensive at 18 bucks, but I mean, it's a limited edition. You can't get it every day. So get some of this stuff. All right. This has been Mont Blanc's Meisterstruck Blue Hour. Go and uh, find this at a place where you can. I don't know where you're going to be able to find it, but it's limited edition. It should be coming around soon. Uh, of course, you can go to andersonpens.com, check out, see if they have it. I don't know when you're going to be watching this video, so I can't tell you if they have it or not, but go check it out. They usually get uh, some shipments of this stuff. So... There you go. And it's also very recent, so you've got time. But, you know, don't dither. All right. This has been Ink Dependence. I am Mike. And uh, if you like what's going on here at inkdependence.com, please go over to patreon.com slash inkdependence to find out how you can keep my show on the air, so to speak, and also keep it uh, advertisement-free. I'd really rather not have ads, uh, but I would like to fund my, uh, my blog a little bit. So um, go to Patreon. Find out how you can help. Every dollar helps. Every $20 helps uh, me keep this blog rolling. So thanks very much. That's my pitch. And uh, peace out, y'all.